So identifying these chimneys is, is very critical. And then you need to identify the chimneys that have economic mineralization through the chimneys that just have, uh, let's call it uneconomic mineralization. So we found chimneys, we found pathfinder elements in there, and we found a way to identify where these chimneys are, how these chimneys present on surface. So that's absolutely fantastic. Now, it was just a tiny program. It was the first program ever done. This property's never been kicked around by any other big company. No drill holes had ever been done before. Peter Lata, Silverwolf Exploration. Good afternoon to you, my friend. How are you? Hey, Andy. I am doing very well. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. It's actually very timing, uh, timely. Silver is ripping today. This is the 12th of March, 2025. Um, let's, um, you know, we're getting so much interest now from a lot of, uh, it's starting to trickle down to a lot of exploration companies as well as small uh, producers. Let's give us the 30,000 foot view on Silver Wolf here. Where are you guys at? And let's start with the project and what you got. Yeah, yeah. I, let me give you a bit of a background first here because I got to tell the Silver Wolf story. I have to tell the Avino story as well. So I also work for Avino. I'm the VP of Technical Services. I'm a technical guy by education. I uh, graduated here from UBC, the University of British Columbia in mineral processing. And I've kind of worked all around the world uh, from really the Yukon to, to Argentina in silver projects and all over the place in Africa and in different gold projects. So I've been a precious metals bug uh, since graduating university over 20 years ago and uh, really focused on a lot of silver projects from a technical side of things. And I kind of went back to school, got my MBA as well, and then got a corporate gig with a company called Avino Silver and Gold, uh, being their um, technical services manager and worked my way up to VP of technical services. Uh, and, you know, in working with Avino, they have a project in Durango, Mexico. I noticed a bunch of other assets in the company that they weren't getting any value for. So I went to the CEO of Avino and said, hey, listen, you know, I think these projects are probably better served in its own vehicle. And we happen to have one on the shelf. Why don't we dust it off and auction one of these properties? It's in Durango into, uh, into this vehicle called Silver Wolf. We named it Silver Wolf. And that was about four years ago now that we did that. And we put our flagship property there, which we now have the Anna Maria project, once again in Durango. Um, and so the story with Avino, just going back a little bit, it is a producer. It's been around since 1968. It had that property, that option to sell wolf since 1968. So this is a property that's been at Avino's arsenal for, for 30 years um, and, uh, or should I should say 50 years. Um, and uh, they didn't do anything with it because they're focused on their own, their own assets and their, their, uh, their own production assets. Um, you know, just put out some financials today, actually, as we speak, uh, phenomenal numbers. So they produce about two and a half million to three million ounces of silver. They're putting another mine in production. Uh, you know, they've had various different assets, uh, but they were offloading non-core assets. So that's how Silver Wolf was born. It was an auction from a, from a company that's been operating in Durango for a long time. And there's a ton of benefits in doing that. Really, it's about keeping costs down and you leveraging the expertise. So, you know, it's done with the same team here uh, out of the corporate office, the kind of the same CFO. We get to utilize some of the same geologists. Obviously, we know Durango extremely well, the jurisdiction, how to get work done, how to apply for permits, uh, you know, and all that corporate infrastructure, accounting, and all that jazz is already set up uh, in Durango, and we have the team to do it. So leveraging that expertise has been really, really key. So that's how kind of Silver Wolf was born. And what the focus is, once again, we are in Durango, Mexico. That, that flagship asset we have is the Ana Maria project, 2,600 hectares, 2,500 hectares, um, just north of Torreon. Uh, Torreon, major city in Mexico. Actually, Pinolas built a smelter in the center of the city and then the rest of the city around it, believe it or not. So very, very mining focused city with a lot of expertise. Uh, you can get to the project within 15 minutes from landing at an international airport. So I get there every time. There's a flight from Dallas uh, to Torreon, and you can drive on a paved road to the project. So it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, and for the most part, these types of concessions don't exist anymore. It's just that Abino sat on it for a long period of time. 
and uh, you know, was, was just paid the claim fees over the course of fifty years, and um, and then you know, I decided to to option it to Silverwolf. So it is a greenfields exploration. Uh, you know, we just conducted the the first drill program on the property. We are after what's called a carbonate replacement deposit. Um, so that is uh, typically very high grade and can be quite large. These are very common in Mexico. Um, a guy by the name of Peter McGaw made a number of CRD discoveries. He's kind of the CRD guru, if you will, in Mexico, um, basic, basically making you know a number of different companies, Mag Silver being founded on, on CRD type deposits. Never heard of it. So I know I gave you a lot there, Andy. And I'm going to give you a chance to ask a bunch of questions or we can take this in whatever direction you, you'd like to go. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for that. And I'm just joking when I said I'd never heard of MAG. <laughs> Everybody. So, um, so you're in that area. I'm actually very familiar with Avino. I've traded in and out just so everybody knows uh, about that. I've traded in and out of Avino over the past three or four years now. Uh, but this isn't about Avino. This is about you, but it's great to know. Um, that gives me a, actually, hmm. that makes me even more interested because of this. Uh, and that happens all the time. And speaking all to the viewers and listeners here, uh, what you'll have is a larger company. And when I say large, it's all relative. Um, but a company that, uh, as you said, Peter, will offload assets not because they don't want them, but just because they, it just makes sense. They're not developing them. They're focusing on other areas. And then what they'll do is they'll see their spin off those assets or sell them to a smaller company or they'll do a joint venture or they'll keep some kind of um, royalty on them or whatever, just so they can be developed and uh, move things along, if you would. So uh, let's talk specifically about a silver wolf here. Tell me about the uh, the area. You said it's a very high grade area, uh, very wealthy in silver. So talk to me a little again about exactly where you're at, what you're looking to find, about when you can talk about the drilling. And then also there's some issues with Mexico. I think they're getting resolved. And by the way, I'm a believer in Mexico. I'm an investor in Mexico. How are you dealing though with some of the political change that's going on in Mexico? Yeah. So, I mean, a big part, and, and you have to understand that Mexico is the, the world's premier silver producer. They produce most of the silver in the world or the largest country that, that uh, the largest producer of silver. So very much the culture of mining, especially in Northern Mexico is ingrained in their DNA. And I think Mexican operators, metallurgists, technical staff, geologists are some of the best in the world. Uh, and certainly product from a productivity standpoint, absolutely. That is the case. So I really like working with Mexicans and this comes from working all over the world myself. Um, you know, a large part of the, the, uh, uh, issues around that is around open pit, a large part of the discussion. Uh, and so like CRDs specifically are underground, you know, at Avino, we are operating underground. We just, speaking of permits, just received a permit, um, for another operating mine, the La Preciosa mine that Avino just purchased a few years ago for Coor. So they're putting that into production. Um, so definitely the permits are being granted. We were able to get drill permits at Anna Maria without any issue, uh, on both, both kind of claim areas. Um, so from that perspective, it's, it's very positive. Now, as I mentioned, the open pits are where there's, there's a bit of contention. Uh, but I think I feel positive that that's actually going to change as well. Um, but if you're looking at an underground deposit with minimal land dis disturbance, I think that's absolutely a positive and, and uh, a thing that can go forward in Mexico. Um, what I think is happening in all over the world, you know, is, 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 uh, you really need to engage with the community beforehand. And, you know, we see this doesn't matter what jurisdiction you're in that that is a key factor uh and making sure you're doing that early making sure you you know the the local people are engaged and it doesn't matter even if you're out in the middle of the wilderness there is some group of people that that has claim to that land uh and just involving them keeping them informed from an early stage and we're doing that even at the drill stage you know we've employed a number of people to just build sort of paths and roads up the mountain for us uh just because you want to get started off on the right foot Got it. So that I would say on the, on the political side of things, um, you asked a question before that, but maybe I'll let you ask it again, just so we're. Yeah, thank you. So tell me about the, the drill. You drilled some holes, uh, just recently. Tell me about what you, if you can tell me what you can about the results and what you think you have, um, again, everything that you can talk about. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, 
Uh, the, the mind that we're modeling after is what's called, it's, it's a very famous mind that, uh, that was around in the, or was discovered in the early 1500s, actually. Uh, it's the Awela mine, or sorry, 1598, actually. The Awela mine. And this produces some of the most uh, precious mineral samples that, that you see. So uh, specifically, atomite and very beautiful minerals that they sell at kind of rock and gem shows, in addition to producing 160 million silver equivalent ounces. So this produced for 500 years, essentially, um, which absolutely phenomenal uh, deposit over a hundred kilometers of underground tunnels. And this was once again, this carbonate replacement deposit. So that's the style of mineralization. And what happens essentially, uh, just on a high level is you have this very hard intrusive rock penetrating through a soft carbonate kind of bed. And that allows for hot hydrothermal fluids that are existing below to come up in essentially either flat line, what's called a manto or these vertical chimneys. So imagine, you know, you have this intrusive penetrating through the soft body and then different cracks and fissures allow for hot water, essentially carrying dissolved minerals to deposit in chimneys or flat line mantles, depending on different structures and whatnot. So that's the type of deposit. That's the type of geology we're after. That Awela mine that I was just talking about, that was a, as I mentioned, a very famous CRD type deposit. There are many CRDs throughout Mexico and, and even into Alaska and kind of on a trend uh, through the United States and whatnot. But that's the, the structures that are around that. And that's what we're focused on. So what we were able to identify in this drill program right, is, hey, we found some of these chimneys as a, also a way to identify these chimneys on surface. They can be, they can be buried or, or deep. And as I mentioned with the Wela, there was 100 kilometers of underground tunnels of high grade of different areas. So identifying these chimneys is, is very critical. And then you need to identify the chimneys that have economic mineralization through the chimneys that just have, uh, let's call it uneconomic mineralization. So we found chimneys, we found pathfinder elements in there, and we found a way to identify where these chimneys are, how these chimneys present on surface. So that's absolutely fantastic. Now, it was just a tiny program. It was the first program ever done. This property has never been kicked around by any other big company. No drill holes had ever been done before. There were some small edits from artisanal miners on surface. Um, so we poked a few holes in there. And as I mentioned, came up with this, these theories of, hey, here's where the chimneys are. Or here's how to identify chimneys. Here's the size of them. Here are these, these, these uh, obviously these chimneys have been mineralized or have the capacity to be mineralized. Uh, so let's find more of them and let's find the one that's got minerals. All right, Steve, did you, uh, do you want to jump in? Did you have any questions yourself? Well, Peter, I, I wanted to ask you about, you said, Whalo mines, you were making a, um, you said that was a model to compare to, uh, on what, right. The chimney basis on, on the, are you basing the ch comparison and the model off the geography, uh, the chimney you're talking about and who else is around you guys that might, be yeah. So that model, so that main, as I mentioned, that main geological feature is this intrusive body penetrating through these carbonates. So this is a big, large granite rock, if you will. Um, and that rock is, that Awela mine is nine kilometers on, on this side of this intrusive. We are on nine kilometers on the other side of this intrusive. So we know that this intrusive has created at least two mines. Uh, one, the extremely uh, successful and, and very rich Awela mine, as well as the La Platosa mine. We are on the other side, and we believe the same phenomena that created those two mines created a mine over here. And you so, said that one lasted 500 years? 500 odd years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't quote me exactly. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of the history of, of mining, and not to bring it back to Abino, but this little nugget. 1558, Captain Ibero of Cortez's army found um, a, what he claimed was a mountain of silver, and he built the city of Durango to mine it. And that was, wow. Abino. and we are now, so that was 1558. It was owned by the British Spanish mine, and we're still mining it underground. Yeah. You know, it continues on. So uh, there's a lot of this history where Spanish, you know, the, the conquistadors were were, were big geologists and they made certain discoveries and those discoveries continue to pay dividends to this day. Yeah, that's phenomenal. 
Uh, let's talk a little bit about the stock and the share structure here. Uh, what kind of, uh, what's your uh, fully diluted uh, shares uh, that you have currently out? Yeah, so we have 46 million shares outstanding currently and fully diluted, we're at 54 million more or less. So you're really tight. Really okay. tight. Uh, we own about 50% of that management and insiders. You talk about largest shareholders. Avino has a good portion. Our chairman uh, has a good portion. I have a good portion. Management and insiders control 50%. So we definitely have a lot of skin in the game. Um, you know, because of the, the structure and the way we've organized things, like none, none of management gets a salary. And there's not a lot of junior mining companies that can say that. You know, this isn't a lifestyle company where we're just kind of plugging along. We I've never back. heard that, just so you know. Well, I have heard that, but it's rare. But go ahead. And the only way that we create value in the exploration game is by making discoveries. And we recognize we have to focus, uh, uh, you know, all of our resources on that and be as diligent as we can with our capital and run things on a shoestring budget. And so management is bought into that. You know, our senior geos are consultants. Also, you know, we have some really big names involved that aren't getting paid because they want to be associated with the discovery. You know, that, that has, that, that means more at this point in time. So, and, you know, people might ask, well, how do you survive? You know, it's like, I'm not independently wealthy, uh, but I also work for Avino, as I mentioned. So, you know, that, that's how we're able to share resources, you know, we can get some really top talent uh, by sharing those guys when they're not, when they're not working at Avino, when geologists aren't on the field at Avino, well, let's go to Silver Wolf and run a program. And, you know, you can share resources there because not every activity is going on all the time. And, and uh, it's a really good use of, of resources. Got it. Uh, Peter, can you uh, shout out your website if people want more information as well as your uh, stock ticker symbols and what are the traded on? Yeah, yeah. So we trade uh, on the TSX Venture and the symbol is SWLF. Uh, and we trade, um, uh, or our website is silverwolfexploration.com. Excellent. I'll put all this in the show notes. Steve, did you have anything you wanted to wrap up with? Uh, no, Peter, thanks for sharing. Excited about silver. Uh, just before we let you go, is there any news that you can share with us or our listeners about why silver wolf is such a great play? Yeah, I think, you know, like I think to your, to your point, Andy, I think you're going to start to see uh, money trickle down from the majors and the producers and the intermediates to the junior sector. You know, we're certainly starting to see that with the Vino. We're, we're up 20% today. And that's typically how the market goes is that, you know, you start with the seniors and then the intermediates, then the juniors, and then the exploration companies. And there's a lot of torque because there's not a big float out there. You know, it doesn't take a lot of buying to really move the stock. And, uh, you know, that's why I think there's a really big opportunity is that, you know, you look at a company, we're currently at $4 million market cap, you know, eight cents trading. Like there's not, there's not a lot of downside risk and you can't get a management team that's this good with a share structure that's this tight with an asset that has a lot of potential for cheaper. You just can't get it. So I think there's a very minimal downside risk uh, and uh, potentially a lot of upside. Excellent. Thanks, Peter. We do appreciate your time and love to have you on again. Thanks, Thank Peter. you so much, guys. Take it easy. You bet.